Well, hi, folk. Welcome back. We've been looking at maps. What we're going to do in the next two sessions is we are going to look at a question that I designed for my metric class. And it's a question on map work, and it involves a whole series of maps. And remember, up to this stage, we've looked at national road maps, we've looked at strip maps, we've looked at city maps. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to take all these maps and put it into one question. Right, without wasting any time, let's get started. So, in this session, we're going to look at a typical test or exam question which incorporates or involves all the various types of maps. So, let's paint the picture of this question. Danny lives a boring life in the city of Bloemfontein. He decides to travel to Port Elizabeth in order to run the Nelson Mandela Bay Half Marathon. Use the map to describe in detail the route Danny could follow to travel from Bloemfontein to Port Elizabeth. Make mention of the national roads he would use. Okay, please take note. It says the route he could follow. Now let's have a look at this national road map. And looking at this national road map, we're here in Bloemfontein and we want to get to Port Elizabeth. Okay, so Danny, he lives in Bloom. He wants to get to Port Elizabeth because he wants to run the half marathon. And in order to do that, he now plans this route. So what route could he follow? Well, there are two or three routes that he could follow. Let's have a look. He could travel along this route over here from Bloemfontein, and he could drive and then hook on to the N6. So he's driving along the N1. He then takes a left along to the N1, gets, uh, continues along the N6 rather, and then turns right on the N2 and gets to Port Elizabeth. Another route he could follow, he could be traveling along from Bloemfontein, continue along Bloemfontein, and then cut left onto the N9. When he gets to the N9, where the N9 and the N10 cross, he now takes another left, continuing along the N10 until it meets the N2, where he will take a right and go straight on to Port Elizabeth. So guys, you can see here that there's not just one route. There are actually two uh, routes. In fact, there could even be more. He could have carried along the N1 and then crossed over on the N10 and taken this little bit here, which that would be a little silly because... Uh, by taking, uh, cutting across on the N9 here, he's cutting out quite a bit of time and distance. Okay, that's how we've used the national roadmap. So Danny lives in Bloemfontein, wants to get to Port Elizabeth. He looks at our national roadmap and says, right, these are the routes I'm going to follow. Let's have a look at the next question. Use a distance chart to determine the distance between Bloemfontein and Port Elizabeth. Okay, so Bloemfontein, we're going to look at this column over here. And then Port Elizabeth, we're going to look at this row. And we're going to see where do they meet. And they meet over here. And that distance is 677 kilometers. Cool. Easy. See how we're using different uh, parts of the map work that we've learned? Let's have a look at our next question. Now we're looking at a strip map. It says use a strip map to answer the following questions. And folk, you can see that the strip map is telling us the distance for, or showing us the route from Bloemfontein to Port Elizabeth. Okay, and we have looked at a very similar strip map in our earlier session. So this should be not be very new to you at all. And you can see we're telling him to carry along the N1. He's driving along the N1. And then do you remember he turned down the N9? Do you remember this little thing here? Let me show you that little part there was this little part here. Let's find it quickly right over here. Remember that little part here? Let's get a different color so we can see it. That part there. Okay, so you can see how the two are now linking together. So we're driving along, we cut along the N9, and then we get on the N10. And once we're on the N10, we were driving all the way around the N10 until we reach the N2. We turn right, and then we drive on to Port Elizabeth. Now, what questions are they going to ask us? The first question they're asking is, what is the distance between Bloemfontein and Port Elizabeth? So, uh, Bloemfontein and Port Elizabeth, 
We're starting at zero from Bloemfontein. We're getting all the way down to Port Elizabeth and we see it's 600. And 60 kilometers. Now, folk, let's have a look at something. When I looked at my distance chart, I got 670. When I look at this, I'm actually landing up with a different answer, and my answer is 660, not 670. So it's slightly out. And why would it be slightly out? Because maybe the two routes taken weren't quite identical. The other thing is, when I'm measuring the distance between one city and one city, some uh, times the measurements taken from the center of that city to the center of the next city. Whereas in other cases, sometimes the distance is taken from the outside of the one city to the outside of the other city. So it all depends where the measurements are actually taken from. Okay, And obviously these two maps, either A, the route is slightly different, or B, um, the starting and ending measuring points are not quite identical. Okay, so when we look at the question, the question said the answer and the distances are not the same, and we've discussed that already. Now, which town is closest to the halfway mark between Bloemfontein and Port Elizabeth? So let's have a look at our map. We know the whole distance is 660 kilometers. So what I'm going to do with my calculator is say 660 kilometers. I'm going to divide it by two and I get 330 kilometers. So we want to know along my route which town is closest to 330 kilometers. Let's have a look at our distance markers here. We leave Bloemfontein to Tromsberg is 114. Then to uh, Colesburg is 225, and um, uh, Middleburg 322. I would say, and then the next town's 420. I would say the closest, and remember we're looking for 330 kilometers, is probably this town over here, which is the town of Middleburg. So Middleburg is probably the halfway mark. So if I'm traveling and I want to say, right, when I get halfway, I want to take a break. What town am I going to stop in? I'm going to stop at Middleburg. Okay, my next question is this. Um, how many times, sorry, let's go. Um, Danny will be traveling to Port Elizabeth in his 1972 Fiat 133. The little car has a 30 litre tank and averages 14,3 kilometers per litre. How many kilometers could the car travel on one full tank of petrol? Okay, so he's got 30 litres and so he's saying, right, this car's got 30 litres. Each litre takes him 14,3 kilometers. So we multiply by 14,3 kilometers and I'm going to use my calculator 30 multiplied by 14.3 and I get an answer of 429 kilometers. So that's how far my car can travel or Danny's car can travel on one tank of petrol. But now you will realize straight away we have a problem. And what is our problem? Our problem is that from Bloemfontein to Port Elizabeth is 660 kilometers. Ish. So if Danny leaves Bloemfontein on a full tank, guys, bad news, eh? He's going to push that car for the last few hundred kilometers unless he fills up with petrol. So our next question is this. How many times would Danny have to stop to refill his car? Well, if he starts with a full tank, the first time he fills will be at 429. The next time he fills will have to be at um, 858 kilometers but he doesn't need to go that far does he no because the distance was 660 kilometers so if it's 660 kilometers he only needs to fill up once along the way presuming he's left with a full tank of petrol okay now suggest a good place Danny could stop to fill up with petrol remember we have to go 429, if we go any further, we're going to run out of petrol. Now, I would strongly suggest that if I'm told that my car can do 429 kilometers, folk, I'm not going to travel 428 kilometers and then say, let me look for a petrol station. Okay, why? Because on average, his car does, what's that, 14,3 kilometers or whatever we said it was. What was it? 14,3 uh, kilometers. 
If suddenly the motor is not running as it should, it's going to use more petrol. If I'm caught in traffic and I'm stopping, starting, stop, I'm going to use more petrol. So it's a very dangerous thing to say, right, I know I can do 429 kilometers. I'm going to find a petrol station that's exactly 429 kilometers away and then I'm going to stop and fill up with petrol. Ish, you're playing with fire, hey? I would say around about 380, I'm going to start saying, ish, guys, we need to start filling up with petrol. So let's go back to um, our map. We want to find 429. I've got 114. I've got 225. We've got 322. I've got 420. Now, folk, remember, 420. Three kilometers, we're going to have a problem. 420 is risking things. And eh? that means I've only got three kilometers to go. Guys, way too risky. I would never, ever, ever stop at 420. I would like to say we've got to stop somewhere between Middleburg and Craddock. Okay? Maybe at Fisrafi. Right? Oh, there's nothing to stop me saying, you know what, Middleburg is quite a big place. Chances are it's got a lot of petrol stations. I'm going to fill up with petrol here. And then I'm going to carry on and continue with my jersey, cause, uh, journey. Because if I do there, I've done 322. And remember we said we can do 420 something kilometers, didn't we? Let's just see it quickly. We said we could do 429 kilometers. So if I added another 400 kilometers to that, already I'm way past my 660. So I could actually fill it up at Middleburg and quite comfortably make it into Port Elizabeth. Right. Now, my next question says this or asks this. Suggest a good place Danny could stop. We've done that, right? We said Middleburg. How much would Danny spend on petrol for the trip to and from Port Elizabeth if the average price of petrol is 13 rand 53 per litre? Okay, so he does 660 kilometres is what he's got to cover. Of that 660 kilometres, we know that his car can do 14,3 kilometres per litre. So how many 14,3 kilometres can we fit into 660 kilometres? So all we're going to do is say, right, we've got to find 660 kilometres, divide that by 14.3, and we get an answer then of 46,15. So 46,15 litres of petrol is what is required. Now, determine how long around it to the nearest half. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. We haven't finished this, eh? This just says how many liters, and we've got to work out the cost. So if that's how many liters we need, I'm now going to multiply it by the cost per liter. So I've got this answer here of 46.13. Um, oh, sorry, 46.15. I'm going to multiply that now by 13 rand 53. And I get an answer here of 624 rand 41 cents. 624 rand 41 cents. Easy. Right, now we can move on to the next question. My next question says this. Determine how long, rounded to the nearest half hour, it will take Donny, uh, Danny to travel from Bloemfontein to Port Elizabeth if he averages a speed of 80 kilometers per hour, stops twice for 20 minutes and another once for 15 minutes to fill with petrol. All right, so let's discuss this. So Danny now is traveling from Bloemfontein to Port Elizabeth. He averages a speed of 80 kilometers per hour. Now, folks, that doesn't mean he gets on the freeway and he drives 80 kilometers and away he goes, okay? No, what it means is he could get on the freeway, be traveling at 120, then he goes through a town and he slows right down, okay? Because you've got to slow down when you go through a town. There might be a bit of traffic, so he slows down for that. When he goes through a town, he gets to a robot, so he comes to a screeching halt. But when we average his speed, the average speed is 80 kilometers per hour. Now, how long is this trip going to take him? 
Well, we've got a formula here, and my formula says that speed is equal to distance over time. So we're going to change this formula a bit, and we're going to say, right, let's just try and find the... Okay, so my speed is about 80 kilometers per hour. The distance is 660 kilometers. We are trying to find out the time. Cross multiply here. Time multiplied by 80 gives me 660. I want time by itself, so it's going to be 660 divided by 80. My calculator is going to do that for me, and we say 660 kilometers divided by 80 kilometers per hour, and that gives me a speed of 8, sorry, a time of 8 hours 25, 8,25 hours. Okay, 8 hours, sorry, 8, 25 hours. Now, guys, I want to stress this does not mean 8 hours 25 minutes. Okay, that's not. Why? Because decimals are in places of 100 or uh, tens. So, comma 25 is like saying 20 fifths of 100. But 25 minutes is like saying 25 of 60. So these two things are not the same. So I never want you to write that in an exam. The answer is 8.25 hours. Okay. Now, what is 2.25 hours? 0.25 hours is 25 over 60 minutes. So 25 divided by 60 gives me 0, 41. Rather, okay. So um, we have actually realized that, in fact, it's 60 divided by tw um, 60, sorry, divided by 25, and we get 2,4. But now what I'm going to say to you is do this. Rather say I got 8.25 hours. So let's do this again. 660 divided by um, 80, okay? Divided by 80, and we get an answer, as we said, of 8,25. I'm going to push my time button, and I get 8 hours, 15 minutes. Why? Because I knew that comma 25 is a quarter, and a quarter of 60 is 15 minutes. So the time taken is 8 hours, 15 minutes, not 8 hours, 25 minutes. Are we clear on that? Okay, that's absolutely crucial that you should remember that please okay don't mess that up so 0.25 is 25 over 100 we multiply it by 60 to change it into minutes and we land up with our answer of 15 but we can also use our time button okay now we've done that and so our time has taken us eight hours 15 minutes but folk that's not all the time it took because if I look here I can see that we stopped twice for 20 minutes and once for 15 minutes so to this I've got to add 20 minutes add another 20 minutes and then add 15 minutes so now we add up that gives me 20 40 55, 60, 70 minutes. Eight hours, 70 minutes. The problem with that is 70 minutes makes up an hour and 10 minutes. So an extra hour is nine hours, 10 minutes. I'm going to do that on my calculator with the time. I've already got eight hours, 15 minutes. I'm going to add no hours, 20 minutes, and no seconds. To that, I'm going to add another no hours, 20 minutes, no seconds. To that, I'm going to add no hours, 15 minutes, no seconds. Equals, and there is my time button, 9 hours, 10 minutes. Cool. We still got more questions to answer. We're going to do that after the ad break, though. All right. So, see you shortly. Cheers.